Hey everyone, bit of a discussion video today and the topic is on are influencers to blame for price increases or actually is the blame more on the brands who are taking advantage of the free advertising and the increased interest in certain products and they're looking at it as an opportunity to be able to put their prices up. Now the idea of the video actually came from all of you and it, it's not been one particular person and actually it's been a question that I've seen in the comments for years now, probably at least for the last three years, where I've had um, those of you asking that or even saying, you know, when luxury YouTubers review bags, let's say, or unbox bags, the brands see it and put their prices up so therefore um, there shouldn't be a luxury community almost and so I'm going to talk about all of that and you're going to be surprised to know that I don't really have an opinion either way on this because I think it's really hard to quantify and prove but I do have one sort of I guess you would call it a story time where I have known of a brand who's definitely put their prices up because of some influencer exposure that they got so I'll tell you about that as we go. In order to um, explain the yeses and the noes of this. I'm going to go over some kind of background information because then I think it's going to better um, make sense at the end. So I mean as probably everyone knows and I'm going to I'm going to refer to this as influencers because everyone knows what that is and it it better makes sense. But over the last five years in particular the influencer community has really grown and it's actually become its own sector where there are people out there that do this for an actual living and even if you go back so if you go back 10 years you got a lot of people that used to blog I guess you'd say and they would film videos from their bedroom and it would just be like things I really like things I don't and I think um, you know in truth those videos still exist a lot of people still do them but it has become a lot more commercial and I would say that probably happened in the last for, I want to say four or five years things kind of really ramped up and that I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing and I'm going to explain uh, as we go through right behind you at the moment there is like something on my blind and it looks like a massive spider but I'm going to wait until it's not moving so I'm going to wait until after the I'm not touching it David can come and do that even if you go back to 2020 you might there were so many people so many of my friends set up TikTok accounts because everyone was um, like locked in there was not much to do and again that was another point in time where so many new people joined platforms doing something that they'd always wanted to do but never had the time for and that is to blog or influence or whatever you want to call it. For my day job there's also been a really massive change over the years where if we talk about brands, brands have definitely noticed influencers a lot more. Um, now for my day job I have a sm like a small marketing agency with my husband and typically what we've always done is what you call traditional advertising so it's ECRM which is like email campaigns, uh, digital which could be um, like an online digital campaign of like banners let's say tied in with emails tied in with other types of content that all pushed like to a website or whatever it may be. Then you've got press which could be magazine or uh, newspaper and then you have TV and typically all of those things can be quite expensive to do because if you take a magazine article let's say you have to pay for a photographer, copywriter, you know, what's the headline going to be, what's the call to action going to be, you potentially have to pay for a model. And then on top of that, you have to pay for media space. So this is when you've completed your advert, you are happy with it, and based on the advert, you already know the profile of the person that you want to see that advert. So it's normally people aged uh, X to Y, uh, that potentially earn X to Y, that are in this demographic and then based on that you pick the pub publication that's most likely going to um, attract that kind of person and you pay a fee, a media placement fee to be in that magazine. But if you take Influencer for example, it is so much cheaper and it's actually more effective. So when you use an Influencer, your videographer, your model, your planner, your copywriter, everything you give to one person, 
and they go and deal with that and they will come up with the creative that ticks all the boxes that you want to have ticked. And the big thing here, the really massive thing, is you're not having to directly pay for media placement. You are, have access to that influencer's audience and that audience is so much more engaged than you will ever get on a magazine article being flicked through by a random person who if you're lucky might stop and look at that article and if you're very lucky they might actually go and check out what it is that you're promoting. Whereas with an influencer, you're scrolling Instagram, you see a really nice outfit, you pause on it, that influencer says to you, hey, this is where I got it from. You click on the link and it might take you to a brand that you've never heard of. And however you feel about influencing, I do think a benefit to it is it draws awareness to us all for products and services that we didn't know existed and that sometimes we benefit from knowing about. I know for me personally, I'm, big on Inst like I'm not big on Instagram, but I love Instagram, I scroll it a lot and I'm really tempted by so much of what I see. And it, they're things that are, a lot of the time I didn't even know existed. Are influencers to blame uh, for price increases? Because you know, we see it with bags all the time. The prices are always going up and up and up. Um, are influencers to blame? I d and I don't think you can prove it either way. I don't know whether it's a case of that the brands are going, oh look, we're getting free advertising here, let's put our prices up because the demand's still going to be there. Or I don't know actually whether brands already put their prices up, so I don't know how much of it is just them doing what they always do and also seeing how much their customers are still spending on certain bags and maybe thinking, well, that one's popular and it looks like it's gonna stay popular, so let's hike the price up on that. Do you see what I mean? I don't know how much of it's to do with customer profiling or whether it's them going, oh, look, X number of influencers are pushing it, let's put the price up. I feel like it might be more to do with sales and profiling and then working out whether they can get away with the price increase, but then the question is, is the customer profiling, is the amount of people buying? indirectly from influencers. Now to kind of um, to kind of tell you this story and to give you an example of where I noticed a brand absolutely put their prices up because of influencing, it happened a couple of years ago. And I don't know how many of you remember, they used to be really trendy. They were these throw type blankets and they were made from really thick wool. Like the wool was like this thick. And people used to hand knit them and they were like a really chunky knit made out of merino wool. Now, just before they got popular, I, and I think this is how they actually did get popular, I was reading a news article that came up on my phone, giving credit to an influencer who, um, through reviewing one of these blankets, had really helped a small business on Etsy. And um, I saw this blanket and I thought, yeah, that's quite nice, I'll go and check it out. And I clicked through, got through to the Etsy shop, and the blanket, I remember, was around £200, which for Mourinho wool, is about right, like it's really expensive, particularly if it's like that, it's gonna be really expensive. Anyway, I thought I'm gonna go away and think about it. And I went back to it a couple of days later and the price had gone through the roof. I wanna say it was like five or 600 pounds. It, ki it kind of felt greedy um, in a way and I did wonder whether actually that would just impact their sales in the wrong way because also at the same time were loads of other craft people who were making the same thing for a lot less. So that's definitely um, an instance where brand awareness and attention and a, a big influencer pushing a product caused a company to inflate their prices. But as I say, I'm not really sure either way. I think the whole thing is really, it's really hard to prove either way. And if any of you work for big brands and you know any differently, please can you leave below, I'm not saying do it in your real name or anything, but if you have a private account and let's say you work for a big brand, if you know and can say, yeah, they do watch influencers and they do bear that in mind, then please share that below. But equally, if you know differently, if you know, yeah, brands put up their prices, but it's to do with popularity and demand as opposed to watching influencers and then jumping on the back of that, 
please share those thoughts below. I would actually just love to get your feedback on all of this. I feel like it's an interesting topic. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to uh, talk to you now in the comments.